Okay, so what does this picture make you think of? Clouds, files, cabinets, drawers, storing things? That's exactly what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about storage, data storage specifically. What it is, why we use it, how do we use it, what do we use to store data, for example, um, various devices and stuff. So let's have a look here and say what is storage. If we had to look at a basic definition as to what storage is, we could say that storage is the storing of data using storage media for the immediate or later retrieval for processing and or output. So that sounds like a lot of words, but it's actually pretty basic. Let me give you an explanation. So let's say you have an essay that you've written out or you've planned or you've you know, mind mapped out. You have this awesome essay, but it's all on paper. So what do you do first? You have to provide input via your keyboard. So you type it on the keyboard. And then once you are done typing on your keyboard, you then save it onto your hard drive as storage. Your storage is your hard drive. That is what your hard drive actually looks like. So this is where this is the process that you follow. What do you do then? from the hard drive well after that then it's time to print so from the hard drive we then print our lovely essay so that it looks super cool nicely formatted perfect for the teacher to look at and read of course you might not have used a hard drive you might have put it onto a USB memory stick for example you might have put it online stored in the cloud somewhere it doesn't matter where you've put it the point is that you had to store it somewhere on something in order to access it again and then reprint it so you took your essay you had to type it out in a program such as Microsoft Word for example and then that then saved onto some sort of storage device. So let's have a look at what kinds of storage media do we have. First of all, what is storage media? Well, media is any hardware medium that is capable of storing data in one form or another. So any device that can store data is a storage medium or storage device. Let's have a look at some examples. The ones that you will probably know quite common are the hard drive, the HDD, hard disk drive, that is an internal hard drive that is inside the computer. This is obviously an open one that normally they are in an enclosed case. That is an external hard drive. You just plug that in and it's the same as this. It just runs externally with a cable. Of course, you guys know your USB memory sticks and of course, becoming very popular now SSD drives. Here we have a 500 gig SSD drive. This is an internal drive and they're much, much faster. Here's other storage media that we often use for cameras or phones or tablets. We have flash cards, okay, or compact flash cards, SD cards, SD means secure digital or SDXC. I actually don't know what the XC stands for. I need to go find out. And of course, micro SD cards. You find these in phones and tablets as well. So this is another form of storage media. And of course, ones that we know from the past and uh, CD-ROM drives, DVD drives, Blu-ray discs. Now, some of these are still around today. Well, most of them are still around today, but some of them are starting to fade away. And let's see why that is. When we have a look at these different devices or these different media that we have, some of them are quite fragile and some of them are quite robust. In other words, some of them are not as reliable and some of them are quite strong and very versatile and reliable. And you can see here, I've sort of drawn a little image here. So we've got the fragile over here. Why are these disks fragile now? I mean, 20 years ago, that's what we had but they're fragile because they can snap very easily, they can scratch very easily, it's very easy to damage this form of media. Then we've got our external drive here and our internal drive here, sort of halfway over the line. And then we have robust media, something like the USB memory stick. I mean, that can go into your washing machine, get washed, and your data will still be safe. Don't try this at home, kids. And we also have the 500 gigabit SSD card here, an internal drive, which is also very robust. It's electronic storage. It's very fast, very reliable. So just so that you can see how we are gradually progressing in terms of technology. 
What about the capacity? In other words, how much do these devices actually store? Here are just a couple of examples, all right? Here we have the SD card. It's a SanDisk Extreme Pro, 512 gigabytes. So you can get 512 gig, and it's probably about that size. It's about that, about that size. It's uh, actually quite a lot of data you can get onto that. Here we have a standard USB memory stick. This is a newer one. It's a USB 3, which is really nice, nice and fast and it can hold 128 gigabytes. It's like the size of your thumb, okay? Which is kind of why they also were called thumb drives. 128 gigs. An SSD, a solid state drive, this one is 500 gigabytes. Now, initially it doesn't sound like it's a lot, but the payoff comes in terms of speed, speed and reliability. Um, these will get bigger as we go. I mean, you do get 100, uh, you do get one terabyte and two terabyte SSD drives, and it's getting bigger and bigger all the time. In fact, I think I saw a 64, 64 terabyte SSD drive somewhere, but I don't think I would even have any money enough to buy some of those. Um, here is a lovely, lovely external backup drive. This is an eight terabyte drive, so this is still pretty new at as of the time of making this video. Eight terabytes. An external backup drive for eight terabytes is amazing. Okay, I don't know what that costs. I don't want to know. Here are your typical external drive that you plug in. This is actually quite a nice size, four terabytes. So at the moment, we're still we're still kind of here. Like this is pretty cool for us as normal end users. This would be very expensive. And these these are um, common. 128 gigs for that, 512 gigs for that, those are quite common. The 500 gig is still new as well. But that's just to show you, give you an idea of how much storage space some of these basic devices actually contain. How do we measure capacity? So when we say megabytes and gigabytes and terabytes, how do we actually measure this? Well, let me explain how this actually works. In terms of computers, we start off with bits. It starts off with bits and bytes. A bit is a binary digit. Now, binary means two. So a bit is a binary digit, and it's the smallest increment of data on a computer. So the keyword here is bit. Okay, just remember that we always talk about bits and bytes. So let's have a look at what that actually means. So a bit can actually hold one of two values. And this is the crux of all computers and how they work with data. So if you think that a computer is really smart, it's not as smart as you think because it can only count one or two. And it, it starts with a zero or a one. A bit can hold a zero or a one. And that actually means on and off. That's where the first computers began. It was like electronic signals. So it could be on or off, zero or one true or false. So let's have a look here. Bits are usually assembled into groups of eight and you have eight bits that make one byte. So we've moved on from a bit to a byte. So eight bits make one byte. All right, so that's where we begin starting with our data uh, capacities and measuring. Let's have a look. A byte contains enough information to store a single ASCII character like the letter H, for example. So one letter of your name is about one byte, B-Y-T-E. A kilobyte is 1,024 bytes, not 1,000 bytes, because a kilobyte, uh, the, the, the system that computers use are based on a, a binary system where the base is two, as opposed to a decimal system. We use a decimal system where the base is 10. Computers use a binary system where the base is two. So chat to your math teacher about that and they will explain that to you. It's actually very, very interesting. Let's have a look. Here are just some numbers for you, okay? So we start off with one kilobyte. There it is there, one kilobyte is 1,024 bytes. One megabyte then is 1,048,576 bytes. And then we get to gigabytes, terabytes, petabytes. After petabyte, we get exabytes. We'll look at the next screen. I'll show you what that means. So here you can ju just gives you an example of how many bytes we have. So now you know how much information one byte can hold. And then you can see how much information each one of these uh, data measuring units is capable of holding. This gives you a better idea over here. Here we have the data, the size, 
and then a real world example to give you an idea of how much information that actually is. We start off with bit, a single binary digit, it's one or a zero. Then we have a byte, which is eight bits, and that's a single character, like the letter M. Then we have a kilobyte, 1024 bytes, so that's roughly equivalent to two or three paragraphs of text, it's a couple of kilobytes. Then we move on to megabytes, 873 pages, gigabytes, terabytes, petabytes, okay, now we're talking very, very big data storage here, exabytes, where's my mouse, exabytes, zettabytes, and yottabytes. I don't think we're here yet. We're nearly there, though. So if we had to break this down for us as normal users, we're in this zone here, the green zone. This is us. We're currently up to terabytes. You can get computers, laptops, desktop machines, servers, all with terabytes of storage, up to terabytes of storage. When you start looking at this area from petabytes, exabytes, and upwards, that is now supercomputer level. All right, we're talking like major data farms, server farms, Google, Microsoft, all those guys. The big guys, they're playing in this field. We're playing in this field. The last thing to look at in terms of storage is primary storage versus secondary storage. You're always going to hear these terms in your exams, primary storage and secondary storage. When we start up a computer, it always accesses what's called the primary storage first. That is this, the RAM, the random access memory of the computer. That's primary, so that's the first place it goes when the computer is switched on. So all the data that you're working with, the programs, the content, everything that you have goes into this location here, primary. Then when you are done working on a document, for example, that awesome essay, you then save it onto secondary storage. That's more permanent. So remember the difference between these two. Primary storage, RAM, random access memory, is temporary. It is fast. It needs to be fast so that you can constantly be typing and, and calculating and doing things. The processor is working with the RAM all the time. So primary storage is fast. Secondary storage is permanent. That's where we save the work when you're done. That's why we always say, save your work. And it also has a greater capacity than the RAM. For example, RAM could be eight gigabytes, maybe 16 gigabytes, or even 32 gigabytes of RAM. However, your hard drive is going to be 500 gigabytes, maybe even a terabyte of, of storage, because you need to save all of your data permanently onto that. So that is an example of primary and secondary. I hope you've understood a little bit about storage, storage media, what we use storage for, and what types of storage media are available. Please familiarize yourselves with these devices because they will pop up in some of your tests and exams.